Hey everybody, welcome back to Renewed Homestead. Uh, we're not on the homestead, you might see in the background there. We are gonna go do a little shopping. And the question has come up, and I know everybody has their videos on, how do I start prepping, what do I buy, You know, where should I start? Well, I know there's a lot of channels doing that, but you know, there's folks that maybe don't watch a lot of other channels, like mom, hey mom, <laughs> who ask, well, where do I start? So uh, we're gonna take you in, and, and as we go through our stuff, we'll, uh, We'll show you some of the other things that we would buy if we were just starting out and just suggestions that might help you out. All right, so we're doing this from a standpoint of what would we do if we were just starting out. So we're not necessarily buying the stuff today, but one thing we'd look at is canned meat. You know, it's looking at what what can you add and make your food dollar and your food stretch, because if you can't get to the grocery store, you know, anything that's gonna make it easier for yourself. So, you know, whether it's, you know, canned chicken, tuna, uh, you know, some people like spam. We're not a big fan of spam, but you know, that's something I, I like real food. <laughs> <laughs> but but you could you could chop it up and put it in eggs if you've got eggs or rice. You know if you if you're down to a great big bag of rice and a couple of eggs, it will keep you alive. Spam spam might you know make it a little more palatable. So anyway, that's uh, that's the area of the canned meat that we wanted to bring up. For All you. right, what else would stretch your dollar? How about some pasta? Um, you know, that's that's another thing you can dress up. Just like with rice, you can, uh, you know, throw a little bit in, and it goes a long way for inexpensive. You can get the uh, fancy Borelli. Borella. Borella. <laughs> Borelli. Uh, I don't know. Beretta Borelli. I had a Beretta once. Boy, that car was a pain in the. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, but uh, you can get the Sam's for less than a buck a pound. That's cheaper than you're gonna find it in the grocery store. Now, you don't have to do this at the big clubs, uh, Sam's. You know, we prefer uh, Costco ourselves, but we the closest one is like three hours away, so we're not going to no, Costco. we're not going yeah. to Knoxville. <laughs> <laughs> no, not from here, but anyway, so pasta, there's another idea for you. All right, here's the area you're all looking for, the rice and the beans. Now, these have gone up in price probably a couple dollars over the last three, two or three months, but this is where you can really, really stretch your dollar. I mean, you look at the, and think how many, uh, how many meals could you get out of a 12 pound bag of beans and 25 pound bag of rice? Uh, you know, it's, it's going to fill your stomach. Are you gonna be excited about getting up and having rice again and again? Well, I guess it depends on how long it's been since your last meal, but that's where adding some veggies to it or a little bit of meat, uh, some spices, you can dress it up and you know, it'll fill the void for a little bit. And we have a few of these bags. We so do have a few do. of those. We have a few of these as well. And, I uh, like basmati. Yep, basmati is good rice. Uh, but again, this is this is where you can really make your dollar count and stretch it. Okay, so if you got your rice and your beans, um, you know, you might want to think about flavoring that. Now there is, you know, the option of bouillon and things like that but there's a lot of additives in there. So you might really wanna just consider like just some minced onion or garlic powder, uh, as long as garlic powder's not 
If it's dehydrated and not overly cooked, you can use it medicinally too. But, you know, if you're down to eating rice and beans, you know, just a little bit of flavoring here and there, you might really come to appreciate that. But it's one of the aisles we stopped through and we thought, well, you know, it's worth bringing up. So you might throw some of that in your uh, preparations. All right, so how about some veggies? You know, you can get the cans of veggies here. Uh, it's something that you can throw in with your rice, your pasta. Uh, you know, now my grandma, you would call her up and say, what'd you have for dinner, grandma? Oh, I just opened a can of, can of peas and she ate about a half a can of peas, but you know, she weighed what all of about 80 pounds soaking wet. But <laughs> anyway, that's uh, another, another option, something else you can get here. You know, of course, this time of year, you can go to your farmer's markets and get it yourself and can a lot of these things. So the less processed a product is, the less you're gonna pay for it. All right, here's another item that you might be asking, well, why are they not looking at flour? Because you might need that for baking and so forth. Well, it is an option, but once that wheat berry is ground, you're on the clock. That's gonna start going stale. So you would have to make sure you you know, vacuum sealed it with oxygen absorbers to try to prolong life. But uh, that is it's one of the reasons we're not picking that up right now. We do have our own wheat berries and we can grind that into flour when we're ready because those will last pretty much indefinitely until they're ground. So, you know, we just wanted to bring it up because in case you're asking, well, why aren't they buying a bag, a big, great big bag of flour while they're there? Well, that's, that's the reason. All right, I would definitely pick up some diced tomatoes or tomato sauce. You can do a lot with these with recipes and, and as we talked about stretching um, food, which is going to be critical if you have a food shortage. Um, so definitely pick up some diced tomatoes and tomato sauce. They are inexpensive. They will last a long way. Now, like we said, if you can pick up uh, tomatoes from a farmer's market and corn, green beans, peas, and can and jar them yourselves, they are going to be better because the less processed, they're better for you, less expensive, but we understand that everybody has that option. So here uh, is something you can do to add some flavor and make it stretch. Okay, in a bad situation, fats are gonna be hard to come by. You can get those from peanut butter. They might have a little more sugar than what you want, but you are typically gonna be burning more calories in a bad situation, so that might not be a bad thing. And if you're allergic to peanuts, there is almond butter. All right. Well, wasn't that a fun trip through Sam's Club? <laughs> At least no, it's a yeah. Wednesday. We don't come to these places on a weekend. No. And we don't go to Asheville anymore either. <laughs> We're up in Johnson City right now. But um, by no means is this an exhaustive list. Um, and what else would we pick up? We look for it. Ghee. Uh, ghee is, is clarified butter, if you don't know, if you've never used it. But it's shelf-stable. And, you know, you can also make butter shelf-stable by canning it. Well, why, uh, now, I guess the question is, why would you get ghee? What's the importance of getting ghee? Um, well, you tell us. What is the importance of getting ghee? Well, fat <laughs> is going to be really difficult to come by in yeah. situations. And so ghee is, as you said, is clarified butter. So it will give you the fat, but it's also really good at high heat. So for frying and other things, and it is shelf stable. We like olive oil, but olive oil is going to go rancid fairly it's, quickly. It seems, I don't know if it's just altitude or weather. It seems like it goes a lot rancid a lot faster here for some yeah, reason. Yeah, I'm not sure why, or maybe but, it's just what's but, going on and, right now. But. And that's why we talked about the peanut butter, but uh, coconut oil is also good. Mm -hmm. um, coconut oil lasts, lasts a long lasts time. Lasts a long time, but it can flavor your food. So it's just something to keep in mind, but you would... You know, it's another fat, another oil that you can have that's handy. Mm -hmm. They do have it in here. I didn't, uh, I don't think I caught that on, on camera. But, no, no, coconut uh, oil is good. Olive oil is going to go bad fast. Um, that's why we like ghee. We, we use ghee a lot. Um, it gives you a good fat. Um, it's really good for high heat. Um, and avocado oil is great too. But again, avocado oil is going to go bad quick. So we're trying to, to look for things that are going to be shelf stable for you and help you um, as you're trying to prep. And it's important to remember, you don't have to get everything all at once. No. Um, you know, pick up a little bit here, a little bit there. I mean, when, when well, he started, I, I was never a prepper. Long ago. <laughs> Long ago. <laughs> um, when he started. Um, she should have known to run. <laughs> I was glad during COVID, huh? 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So are my kids. Yes. So, um, you know, just pick up a little bit here. Pick up an extra bag of rice, an extra bag of beans. Do what you can, um, but that will help you start to build up um, a little bit of a pantry. Um, and remember, I mean, even if things don't go to, you know, hell in a handbasket, uh, you know, right away, um, you know, you're, you're keeping costs down because inflation is going to keep rising. So, yeah, well, just like we mentioned on the rice in the last few months, uh, those bags of rice have gone up a couple dollars and still inexpensive for what you get. Yeah, it is. It is. You get a lot of meals out of that. But anyway, um, yeah, let us know your thoughts. You know, this is just, it's, it's a starting point, some place for you to, to look and see and, and get started but put things away and make sure you have plenty of water put away like i said if you get something goes bad and you get any kind of notice that something's going on fill every tub you can with water because you need it i mean even the beans and the rice you need water to cook that you need a way to to cook that you know you're not going to want to chew on dry rice that's that's oh, not going to be no. any <laughs> not going to be any fun so you know make sure you've got a little propane tank handy to to put on the grill or uh you know whatever whatever you need to do but make sure you have water and definitely make sure you're praying you know we're, we're praying for you and praying for this country and this world and uh hopefully uh god can help remove some of the madness right maybe maybe we hope <laughs> so all right well uh he, he can i guess it's just we don't know if it's that time or not so that's that's why i said maybe i know god yeah. can it's just yep. You know, you can do anything. Yes. <laughs> Just wanted to but, clarify. That. But you got to pray. Please pray. Yes. <laughs> so, all right, everybody. Let us know what you think in the comments. Make sure you give us a thumbs up. And uh, hey, it's uh, still planting season. So make sure you go over to renewedhomestead.com forward slash shop and get your hoary hoary knife. And your comfrey root. That's right. And dads don't mind a late Father's Day gift either. So that's true. That's right. And the 4th of July is coming up too. What does that have to do with the hoary hoary knife? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you need to dig a hole for your new flagpole. I'm not Maybe. sure you're going to do that with a hurry, hurry nap, but. Maybe they will. All right. All right. Well, we're going to get going. Got to head down the road. So take care, everybody. God bless. We'll see you on the next video. Bye, y'all. Bye.